the power of the power of oh, that's what you're going to say in whom all families are blessed I learn the way you find the me you gave me Forgave my past. Now in your arms, I I learn the way you father me, father me for. Take that song again, but our first prayer point. He said, I have not yet ascended to my father and your father, to my God and your God. I want us to rise and thank him for being our father. Let me tell you, there are abusive fathers, there are wicked fathers that have ruined the lives of their children. But here we are, the Father of fathers, the God of gods, as our Father. We want to say, we're not saying thank you, Father, for being our Father. We want to say thank you, Jesus, for making your Father our Father. He is the begotten, the only begotten of the Father. He brought us in, into that family. We are adopted. We want to say thank you. Thank you for adopting us into this great, precious, lovely family. Thank you for making your father our father and your God our God. Let's just appreciate him. Just thank him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Maluze kre de katande. Men grede mo kusa vra kelima katande orobondo lo mokoze vrudu kusanga limo kototo mangele ba kusa katande le boko korobo kozende e breve keketele mango zu vra dekete. Thank you Jesus. Modu se krede vrando lo mokuzi katande e gradu sakata ya makotoro nengrede. Nengrodo suma katande manguze ketete e gradu vakasa katayamando. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. It's a honor to have him as our father. It's a great honor. Great honor. Great honor. I want us to. Thank God for our earthly fathers. Even if all they could do was send us to school, it cost them. They had to sacrifice. Say, but my, what if one's father is late? You are not thanking God. You are not thanking your father. You are going back again to Jesus. Thank you for the father you gave me. You know, you didn't choose him. You had no say in whoever was your father. You just met it. Right? Yes. And he said, before your father and your mother met, I knew you, meaning he probably, most likely, had a say in who became your father. But my father was not nice. But you are, I'm not talking of my father. I'm talking of an example. But you are the way you are today. You are the way you are today. That means God allowed him that way for a role in your life. I want you to thank God for earthly fathers. Earthly fathers. 
whether they are late or they are still alive. Thank Jesus for earthly fathers who paid their dues to at least make sure we achieved something in life. For us to achieve anything, whether it's education, they must sacrifice. They have to. I'm sure you know what you're going through. Even just a little baby, you know what you're facing. You must, they, they sacrificed. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for my earthly father, for the role he played that who I am today in Christ Jesus. Let's just thank Jesus. Malu sekradu munduzi kirivike du zamatatandi ekradu vuguza kachaka negeli kezide ekrudu vuzine kachaka ekrudu kuzide ningradu vukuze ketete ekrudu zuma kachata nanga jaga jugo ningrede mukuzudu Nengeli kinga luzu ayama kuze nengrede ke krede kuzo voko degete nengali kacha kacha karaba kacha kacho nangolo boko kuzege e krede moko toko kuzo. We give you praise, Father. Thank you, Lord, for our earthly fathers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Please have your seat. The last prayer point in 1 John 2.12 it says I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you fathers because you have known God that is from the beginning. And he said I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. And then he starts again I write unto you little children because you have known the father. I've written to you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong. The word of God abides in you. You have overcome the wicked one. This is a face of three sets of people. The children, the young men, and the fathers. I want us to pray that all our children that are male, all our young men, will attain to fatherhood. The the, the, what I see in today's age is like, it, it's like you need a miracle for you to have fathers now. That God Almighty will help us so that all our children that are males, all our young men will pay the price. There's a price to pay. <laughs> I've never shared this vision. I'm not sure I've shared it with anybody before. That vision there was a story building seven floors. That building was made with diamonds, emeralds, sapphire, stones, gold, precious stones. And the man of God was leading me into the building. I won't tell you his name. It's one of the frontline fathers in the church today, still alive. And we entered the ground floor and there were so many pastors there. Countless, endless. He said, come with me. We climbed the staircase, went to the first floor. We saw pastors, ministers of God, but not as much as the ones in the ground floor. Then he said, come up. We have to go up to the next floor. We went to the second floor. And as we were going, the ministers were reducing. They were reducing. Till we got to the sixth floor. There were just about four ministers. They said, come up. There's another floor. And we got to the seventh floor. And there was nobody except myself and him. And I remember, I remember the bed was like a room. It was a water bed. It was blue. I can remember clearly. And it was gold. It was blue. He said, sit. Then he brought out a knife. I said, what is that for, sir? He said, you will have to be circumcised. I said, circumcision. He said, no, not that. He said, I'll be cutting 
a substantial part of your flesh. I said, that's painful. He said, then you can't stay here. I said, but, apart from painful, is there any anesthesia? No anesthesia. No pain relieving. I said, God, that's heavy. I said, that's going to be a major scar. He said, you live with that scar for the rest of your life. Otherwise, go downstairs. You can't stay here. That's the only condition to be here. And remember, you are the only one here. There is no other person here with you. I won't tell you what transpired further. That's private. <laughs> That's a price to pay to be fathers. That's why you don't run your mouth against fathers. You don't. You don't. God will not take it kindly. He will not take it lightly. May our young men pay their dues. Did you hear me? You are quiet. May they pay their dues. May God help them to become fathers. In the name of Jesus. <sighs> I remember um, somebody was telling me the husband is an engineer. It's an engineer. It's a building engineer. And he's been praying. He said, Lord, open doors. Agrees. Make me great. <laughs> he said, a man appeared to him. He said, how great do you want to be? He said, I want to be bigger than Julius Berger. And he asked him, can you pay the price? He asked him three times. Can you pay the price? Can you pay the price? Then he woke up. <laughs> Our young men will pay the price. Amen. They will pay the price. Amen. They will rise. Amen. They will reach the pinnacle of their walk with God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. To know God is the citadel of wisdom where a man can read God. They are the mind of Christ. They are the heart of God. They have reached a stature in God that they are like God. And the major attribute of that face is wisdom, 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 which is lacking. But our prayer is that you will be found worthy to rise to such a pinnacle in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Paul said that I may know him. There's so much to rise. So once again, I sing that song again in the Father of the Fatherless. We're singing it to God, who is our Father, the Almighty, who is our Father. Let me ask you, Jesus never used that title of our father, right? But is God worth more than all the fathers of the earth a trillion times put together? He said, no. He said, I'm your brother. He said, that's your father. He pointed us to his father. He could have said, I'm your father. He related to me as your father. We'll be too glad to make him our father. In fact, we'll consider it great honor for Jesus to be our father. We don't want to see the father. Just Jesus, you are father, you are brother, you are everything. But he said, no, Sam, your brother. Then he took us to his father and said, these are your sons and your daughters. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The Father of the fatherless in whom all families are blessed. I learn the way you find the me the glory you give me life forget the past now in your arms I am I love the way you find the me father me 
Father me Forever you father me And in your embrace I'll be Forever secure I love the way you father me One more time I, I love the way you father me All the ladies in the house walk up to the men and congratulate them wish them happy father's day and look to them as a father in the making amen <laughs> Wishing you happy Father's Day. God bless you all. Amen. Once again, happy Father's Day. God bless all the fathers in the house. They're waving to you too from there. Happy Father's Day, guys. These are ancient like fathers. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, man. Okay. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. No, I hug my wife first. <laughs> that was she has chanced you. <laughs> Thank you, man. She chanced you there. Eh? <laughs> I'm lonely. Oh my. Okay. Um, fatherhood is a title used to address various statues in a being. So, fatherhood actually is a stature. It's a stature. If we look at God, first and foremost, there are about four variations we can look at God as a father. As a creator, God is the father of the whole earth. In Luke chapter 3, we see the genealogy list of Jesus. And then they started from Joseph, who is the son of Jonah. Who is the son of Eliakim? Oh, sorry. They started from Jesus from verse 23. Look through from verse 23. Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. I was supposed to be the son of Joseph, son of Eli, son of Mata, son of... Uh, oh, please, I'm not going to read that. And then if you jump to verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So God is the father of creation. In Genesis 127, he created humanity because fatherhood also means the head of a progenitor, the head of a race, the head of an ideology. So God is the father of creation. In Job chapter 1, verse 6, it says, now this was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came among them. So he even used angels too as sons of God, meaning he's a father to all of them. Though at no time did he address himself as a father to angels, but he's the father of all creation because all creation get their source from him. You know, when they say, for example, when we're looking at types of fatherhood, they are what they call progenitor-like fathers. They are not biological, but they birth a race 
a set of people that achieve certain feats in life. They are considered, they're called fathers. So God is the father of creation. He's also the father of the nation of Israel. In the book of Hosea, chapter 11, verse 1, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. So he called Israel his son. Also in Exodus chapter 4, and I read verse 22, he says, You shall say to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. By that statement, he is the father of the nation of Israel. Israel has four fathers. God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have four fathers. God, Abraham. Abraham is the father of Israel. Isaac is the father of Israel. And Jacob is the father of Israel. There is none after that. He is the father, of course, of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is made clear in so many scriptures. Just look at one or two. Romans 15. I'll read verse 6. And it says that, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So God is the father of Jesus and of course, he's also the father of all believers. Philippians chapter 4, I'll read verse 20. And he says, Now unto God our Father. So we can see four variations of God's fatherhood. Is the father of creation. Is the father of Israel. Is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And is our own father. In Jesus was begotten. We were adopted. Israel was chosen. He's the father of creation by creation. He birthed it. Amen? Yes. Um, we want to look at a few attributes or types of fathers. They say the biological father is the fastest, the two minutes father. Two to three minutes father. That's the biological. Did you hear me? <laughs> oh, let me say something. God is not the father of Jesus by giving birth to Jesus. No, 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 no. It's a relationship that has been before time. So Jesus had been the son of God before time, before anything worse. That is his title. It's a title. Okay? It's not his son because he's small. And God is big, then he was small in a manger. No. Did you hear me? So they are fathers by relationship. Did you hear me? Yeah. He's begotten, but he was not given birth to. So we say biological father is a three, five, five minutes father. It's just five minutes work and he's a father. And that's the least of all the statues of the fathers. Is the smallest and the least. There are ancestral progenitors called fathers. People who birth a race, they are pioneers of a move of an ideology. An example is Israel, Abraham, Jonadab of the Rechabites. These are authors and originators of creation. Of something. In Romans chapter 4, it talks about Abraham's fatherhood, which spans about three or four two. He says, And he received the sign of circumcision, from verse 11, a seal of righteousness of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that might be the father of all them that believe, <coughs> though they be not circumcised. Now, God told him, so shall the sand of the earth be. He said, so shall your seed be. So that is the sand of the earth. That, those are, is from his own loins, which is Israel. So Abraham is the father of Israel. 
There is a father of those who believe, not all Christians. God is the father of all Christians, but Abraham is the father of those who, of the Christians that walk by faith. If you don't walk by faith, you are not qualified to call Abraham your father. He's not your father. That's why Jesus said, if you call Abraham your father, you should do the works of Abraham. So, Abraham is the father of the nation of Israel. He is the father of believers that walk by faith. If you also jump to verse 16 of that Romans chapter 4. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all to those who walk by faith by faith. So, once you walk by faith, Abraham is your father and you are qualified. You know, they say Abraham's blessings are, no, it's only for his children. Abraham's blessings are yours if you walk by faith. They are not <laughs> believers who don't walk by faith. No. God is the father of all believers, but Abraham is the father of believers who walk by faith. These are progenitors. And these are fatherhoods based on antecedents, not biological. Amen? Like Jonadab in Jeremiah 35. And it's not just only his biological children. And you could find the Rechabites were a race of people who everybody knew they don't drink wine. They don't build houses. They don't plant by hearts. They were a group of people from the instructions their father gave them. And that's a father of that race. So you can be a father of a race. For example, if you go on some streets in certain areas, you see some young men smoking weed. You know, they have their father who is late. That's the legacy left for them. He built a race of weed smoking guys. That's a horrible father. I won't mention any name. That's a horrible father. Kofiaka. God forbid that you have such a father that the legacy he leaves behind is just smoking weeds all over. Anything I say to him, you see weeds coming out. So God wants us to rise beyond five minutes fatherhood and raise a race, a lineage, a people that will be peculiar. You know, one of the things I marvel about the word of God, he says, you are a chosen people, a peculiar people. But you find that as you're born again, you're not peculiar. You're not yet peculiar. So, one of the ways to become peculiar is come under a progenitor that births a race that is not seen, that is not like any other race, and then you function under that ancestral progenitor, that fatherhood that comes with a move that is not seen before. That is peculiarity. Peculiarity simply means not common. It's unique. And it's not unique. No Christian is unique because you're a Christian. But you are unique because either submitting to a particular grace that brings out a unique attribute of God in those set of people, then that promise is fulfilled in that life. That's why no promise is just fulfilled. It says you are kings and priests in Christ Jesus. Yes, you are king. But you can't reign until you suffer with him. He said, if you suffer with him, we shall what? Reign with him. King's reign. So to become and enter that office of kingship in Christ, you must suffer with the Lord. Then as priests, there are conditions for everything. It's just, they are there. But everything has a price, has a condition to fulfill before you function and occupy in those attributes. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. So, Israel is the father of, Jacob is the father of Israel. He's not the father of believers. He's the father of Israel. 
and is entitled to whatever fathers are entitled to for the nation. And he will get it both in this world and in the world to come. Amen? Amen. So that's another kind of fatherhood. There's a fatherhood in um, 1 Corinthians 4.15. We have what we call fathers in the faith. Fathers in the faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I read verse 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus have begotten you through the gospel. And then he went on and on. These are fathers in the faith. They are not instructors. There's a difference between an instructor and a father. A father, an instructor gives instructions while a father nourishes. They nourish, they provide, they sacrifice to ensure that you rise. Amen? Like Paul was a father to Timothy. He wasn't just teaching Timothy. He was nourishing Timothy. So there are fathers in the faith. In the Old Testament, it's like, if we look at the Old Testament, there are fathers, not necessarily in the faith, but spiritual-like, like Eli was to Samuel, was like a father. And he guided him right in life. And so you can have fathers in the faith. Like when Samuel came and said, I heard you call me. Second time, I heard you call me. The fourth, they said, no. Next time you hear Say, Lord, speak, thy servant heareth you. He nourished Samuel. He was not as powerful as Samuel, but he was the guide to Samuel that guided him right. He had failures in his life, which he couldn't raise his children well, but he raised. Samuel was raised. Samuel didn't grow by himself. He was raised under Eli. The mother brought him to Eli. So it's like a father in the faith, teaching him the things of God. No, you don't go this way. No, this is how you do this. No, this is what you do this way. And it's good to have a father in the faith. Some of them are not even your pastors. Sometimes you don't even see them all the time. Some are even far off. They're passive. They're not active. Active means you don't interact with them from time to time. You interact maybe online or they travel far away somewhere. But they are nourishers and they can guide you and they can foresee things ahead concerning you. They are like a covering that God puts in your life. In the Old Testament, we have a sample of that in Genesis chapter 8. I'll read from verse um, 20. Noah built an altar to God, took every clean beast of every clean fowl, offered it. It's still part of what we're saying. Now he's taking a decision a spiritual decision that's going to affect not just his lineage, affect his lineage, affect his children, affect his grandchildren, affect his great-grandchildren, and affect the whole earth. And offer burnt offerings on the altar. 21, the Lord smelled the sweet servo, and the Lord said in his heart, because Noah, that's what they can do for a person in life. They can do things on your behalf with God that can secure your life and the lives of those around you. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul said they are not many. They are few. They are few, meaning they are not all over the place. means they are scarce. Praise God. So they are priests. They are ministers of God. And their fathers in the faith, they nourish you in the things of God. Job too was a father in the faith. But for Job, his children would have died. You say, but no. <laughs> yes, he was fearful. Yes, he was afraid. Yes, he broke the hedge. But he secured his lineage. Job chapter 1. I'll read from verse... Um, for his sons went, feasted in their houses. They showed their people, they protect in their houses. Everyone his day sent, sorry, and his sons went, feasted in their houses. Everyone his day sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. 
was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sent, did what? Sanctified them, rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, I am not sure in their drinking they might have misbehaved, they might have said something wrong to God. And the Bible says he did this continually to do what? To protect them. He said, Father in the faith. It's a father in the faith. It's a father in the faith. They don't necessarily have to be a biological father, but they can protect you by the grace of God upon their lives. They can guide you. They can advise you right. And they are fathers. It's a stature. Also in 2 Corinthians 12, I'll read verse 14 to 15. Behold, the third time I'm ready to come to you. I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Verse 15. And I'll be very gladly spent. I'll very gladly spend and be spent for you. You know what it means to be spent? I will spend and I will exhaust myself just for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. So, they don't love him that much. But he loves them that much. And in his interaction with them, say, no, don't spend your money. He spends his money. He spends his time. Then he serves them. Why? Because he's a father to them. The instructor will just give instructions. He is not just giving them instructions. Look at what Paul is doing for these people. It's not just instruction. He said, I will not be burdensome to you. I'm not seeking yours. But I'm seeking you. I want to seek your well-being. I want to seek your welfare. Don't bother to give me anything. Rather, I am coming with something. Parents store for children. So I am storing for you. Though I love you the more, and I know you don't really love me, despite that, I will spend for you, and I will be spent just for that is a father. Did you hear me? Anyone who does that for you is your father. I've seen fathers that gave birth, didn't look back to take care of those children. And it's somebody else that did it. That is their father. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> It can also merge with another attribute of what we call an adopted father. Not, not the one that you, no, no. An adopted father. Like, okay, let's look at um, First Chronicles. Chapter 17. Are you bored? You're not. Don't worry, Mother's Day, let me not say, because they say, they'll quote me now that, Pastor, you said one week. We're going to lock everywhere down for one week. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> verse, from verse 11, And it shall come to pass when the days be expired that you must go to be with your fathers. I'll raise up your seed after you, which shall be of your sons, I will establish his kingdom. He will build me a house. I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father. He shall be my son. I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from, from him that was before thee. I will settle him in my house, in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forever and ever. Now, he's talking about endearment. People who God endears their heart to you and they just look at you 
So what I'm going to do, they will do what your father never did. What your father cannot do, they do it. They are fathers. We call them adopted, but they're fathers by endearment. In Psalm 68, Ari verse 5, a father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. So the fatherless, they become a father to the fatherless by endearment, by compassion, by love. So that's why you can match sometimes the fathers in the faith and this. They may not be progenitors. They don't birth the race. They have not created a unique race for themselves. But they have a capacity and they see a young man that has gifts and talent and his father is not there for him or his father is late and they say, come. And they nourish him. They support him. They help him. They even send him to school. He is their father. And I've seen people like that. Say, my father is not really my father. He's just there. This is the person that sent me to school. This is the person that did this. This is the person that did that. Even when I was going to marry, he's the one that said this. He's the one that got involved. And everything. Amen? Amen. Psalm 89. I read verse 26. If he cries unto me, thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. So, if there's a cry of a fatherless that lacks nourishment and they hearken to the cry and they become a father to such a person by endearment, by compassion, by love. Amen? Amen. Fatherhood is also an anointing. It's an anointing. It's a grace. First John chapter 2, I read from verse 12. It's a grace. It's an anointing. You know, it's an anointing. When God puts that grace on you, old men will bow. Jesus, old age is not fatherhood. A man can be old of 90 and he's not a father. He lacks the stature of fatherhood. He doesn't have it. And I've seen many like that. They're not fathers. And the person can just be 40. Oh, goodness me. And it's the father. You know, David, they quoted, the Lord said, but David said, the Lord said to my Lord, he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at the right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. He said, how does David call him Lord? Right? And they couldn't answer the question. So it's not an issue of age. It's an issue of grace. So somebody can be 45 and it's your father. And the one of 90 is just your brother. It lacks that capacity to nourish you. It doesn't have it. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. And if you have it, you have it. And you just see people unconsciously. <clears throat> 80 people, 80 years, they just bow. Unconsciously. They are bowing to that grace. And he's embarrassed. He said, no, I should bow to you. They don't understand why they are bowing. Why an 80-year-old is bowing to a 40-year-old. They don't understand. Who said, I don't know why you, sir. But just you, sir, is that fatherhood grace they are responding to? And then in their 80s, sir, then they're trying to give an explanation. No, you can't give the right explanation. They don't have it. It's a grace. My prayer is that God will bring you into that grace. And like we said, you pay the price for it. So in 1 John chapter 2 from verse 12, I write to you, little children, because your sins have forgiven you. For his name's sake, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known God. So it's an anointing. It's a grace. It's a stature. It's a capacity that God has bestowed on some men that have paid certain dues with him. Ah. You know, in heaven, there are 24 elders. Elders are like the aged. Men of a realm 
of wealth, of experience and knowledge that have paid their dues with God. They are called the eldership or fathers. They sit with God, the Father, the Creator God, and they can interact with Him. And they can have a discussion with Him because they have the heart of God. The fatherhood of God is in them. So, you know, there are certain people you can't interact with. There are certain people you can't sit and have a dialogue with because your languages don't align. These ones can sit with God. They can talk to God like Moses. Say, God, don't go there. And you, if you try that statement, oh, God, you're in trouble. And when they say, God says, okay, why should I not go there? And they say, because of this, 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 this. I don't like this. And God says, okay, I didn't know you didn't really like it. Okay, I'm sorry about that. And that's how God dialogues with them. But the rest of you, please, don't say, God, I don't like this. Say, God, I beg you in the name of Jesus, please change this. Don't say, I don't like this. Don't talk. They pay their dues to talk that way. You see your father's friend, when he comes to see your dad, maybe your father, Febo! Ah, Febo! What? Close here. <laughs> you know, you don't dare call your dad Febo. You don't dare. You don't dare. His friend, his childhood friend, his friend, they call Timor, Timor, who has paid his dues with him, confronts him and says, man, shit. He says, that boy can say, well, let call a joke with me, my friend. Enter. If you, I say, but I say, enter. You know, you scroll every say, he says, you enter. And there's nothing anybody can. He's paid his dues. And there are men like that with God. They are the fathers. They will approach God's throne with all the authority. And you think they're rude. They're not rude. They pay their dues with God. Say, God, let him enter first. We'll discuss this issue later. How far about this issue? And God said, I thought you'd forget that one. No, I didn't forget. Trust me. And they, they talk and dialogue with God. The Bible says when God came in the cool of the day, he didn't say to talk to Adam, to fellowship with Adam. What do you think he's coming to do? Adam, come here. What's this? Where did you put this? Hey, that's not fellowship. That's authoritarian rule. When he says someone wants fellowship, Adam, what's up? Where are you? Boy, boy, I do. I don't land, oh. Waiting, what? <laughs> Waiting for, how do you put it? I will use that language. I will use that language. When you go to fellowship with somebody, I can't go to Mr. Jesus to fellowship and say, hey, Mr. Sean, what's up? If I go to query him over an issue, Mr. Sean, no, don't smile with me. Don't smile with me. Where's, where's, the, where's the book I gave you? I don't like this. I told you don't take that book. You shouldn't have taken it. I'm reprimanding him. But if I go to fellowship, hey, Sean, kill an apple. What's in the fridge? Yours cooking. Hey, so I got your... Your, your double star, <laughs> I trust you. That's how God was behaving with Adam. You that you enter, space, my Lord, my God, Father, please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, help me. Please, please help me. Adam fell. Why do you think he had the gods to say the woman you gave me? No, it, the, it's the relationship now. You see? When relationship has become a yawa, eh? See finish. That's why you talk. Eh, eh, so, uh, are you not the one that brought the woman? Yeah, you say, okay, I don't like the way you spoke to her. What? What? Are you not the one that brought her? Did I tell you I wanted to marry? Is it not you? That's the, what was going on. But if the relation was draconian, eh? Oh, bitter, yatani. Say, God, <laughs> he'll be on his knees. He didn't kneel, he didn't beg. He didn't say what? What? Wait, I beg leave me. Did you see how Cain spoke to God? Say, leave me alone. What's the problem? Ah, ah, what bitch only me? Did you see how he spoke to God? You do <laughs> Cain, he was say, what's the problem? Ah, do is there a problem between us? Please leave me alone. Is that what he was telling God? Leave me alone. Stay on your own. <laughs> we still my own. They were fathers that interacted with the Almighty. Close fellowship. Jesus said, "You two look at how Moses spoke. That was rude." He said, "How can you say you destroy these people? 
Don't you know? Do you talk to an elderly person? Don't you know? Mbo Ayobolu, you want to talk to somebody of 90 years. Sir, say you won't I would deny. If I were to say, I say, Daddy, I don't know this man. I don't know. I can't separate up at this lady. I may know what we're called full girl, but this man, unless I'm just seeing for the first time, man. That's what I'll do. And I let you hear now because if I do it, let it not be shocked. But he said, Don't you know? Ah. And when he finished, God said, I'm sorry. It's a fatherhood grace. And God is calling us. Say, so can you rise to this level? Can you come up and pay the dues and come to that level of fellowship with me? Even Jesus never spoke to the Father that way. I don't know where they got their boldness from. And the Bible says, God said, I have pardoned according to your word. Ah! It is well. Adebe. Finally, I don't know which father group is this, but I want to believe is the fathers in the faith and the progenitors. Malachi 4, 5 to 6. And I will send Elijah the prophet to you before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He will turn the heart of the fathers to the children, the heart of the children to their fathers, so that I will not smite the earth with a curse. To be honest, the attention is not the children. If the fathers are angry, the earth will be smitten with a curse. They must be appeased. And I ask, is it the five minutes, Father? It can be. <laughs> Praise God. Sorry, I'm using that terminology. I describe, I used to describe men who are not responsible, who just give birth and don't realize that they are endowed to protect, to, pro to provide and to nourish and to bring up the heritage of the Lord. But the Lord is saying, the fathers must be at peace when I return. Otherwise, there will be trouble on the earth. So don't get the fathers angry. I'm paraventure, I'm a father, so don't get me angry. No, I mean paraventure, I'm in this group, so you mustn't get me angry. You must always have peace to me and make sure I'm cool, you know, very happy at all times. Praise God. It's a honor that God has called us to. When we talk about Mother's Day, I'll bring out the mothers to awesome, 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 awesome. But today is the day of the fathers. God has called us to such grace and such honor. And I encourage and I challenge every male in this auditorium today to rise to that stature of fatherhood in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask myself and I ask myself and I ask myself, God knew Adam had fallen and God said, Adam, where are you? Have you eaten of the fruit which I told you not to eat? That sounds like somebody you are playing pranks with. As serious as that offense is, I've not seen God play pranks with anybody in the Bible. He doesn't. If he gives you an instruction, you don't do it. He said, go and tell David <laughs> that this and this and this is going to happen to him. Tell him how dare you that you did it in secret. I will show you I'm God. I'll do it in the open. But a man just plunged a lineage into slavery. And when God comes, he comes with a prank. Adam, where you there now? What's up? I don't see you. Ah, uh -uh. I've been waiting. No, what, what's going on? I guess that's their relationship. It was a hanky, pranky relationship. It was a pals relationship. 
<clears throat> it was not a God man relationship. It was a God man relationship. They never born Adam where to say the woman you give me. They no born Adam where to say it. He, he wouldn't in his worst madness. He wouldn't say that out. Do you get it? So that relationship was a. I'm trying to find the right English to use. And that's what God wants with you. You get it? God wants to come in and say, hey, what's up? How my wife be able to do this because she's not like that. <laughs> she's not, I know she's not like that, but let's try and see, you know. <laughs> she's the straight, holy, <laughs> pure. No. <laughs> I'm holy too, praise God. <laughs> Amen. God wants to come down from his holy seat. But he's not going to do it with children. He's not going to do it with young men. He'll only do it with fathers. He wants to visit you. He wants to sit with you, cross his leg, and have a discussion with you. He wants a very honest opinion. Even if you feel you are not satisfied with the way he has done, you say it as it is. And you are safe. And there's no issue. He wants you to boss him. But he will not do that with children. He will not do that with young men. In his covenant in Genesis 15 with Abraham, God went through the animals. The lower, the lower partner goes through the animal and says, Be it unto me as is done to this animal if I fail you. While the higher one stays out, the lower one goes. So God took the lower partner and went in. God the Bible says, have faith in God, right? But God too wants to have faith in you. He said, I trust Job. I know him. He will not deny me. So God too is looking for people to have faith in. When he says, have faith in me, he too wants to have faith. He says, I know K. Drop everything I know K. He will not do this. I trust him. He wants to have faith in you. God Heaven is over a trillion times the size of the earth, filled with angels he doesn't have fellowship with. Occasionally they ask him questions and he answers them. When you look at Jesus, the way he behaved with his disciples, you will know that he wants to condescend down to able to be free with them, right? He wants to smile, he wants to gist. That's the same way with the father. But he's looking for fathers to do that with. Your father does not want to sit down with your daughter and say, hey, close shell, hey, man, oh, boy. Oh, 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 shark in here. No. Say, Grandpa, are you okay? Grandpa, you don't look normal. <laughs> it's his friend he wants to do that with. He wants to do that with you. He wants you to be his friend. He wants you to be a father. Let's bow our heads and pray. And say, Heavenly Father, help me to rise into that office, that stature, where you can interact, fellowship with me. Help me to be one of those who would take you out of that comfort zone and bring you into a relationship of friends. Help me to be able to reprimand you according to the wisdom you've given to me. God is looking for who to reprimand. He, who will reprimand? He wants it. He wants that too. But you see, he said if Jeremiah, if Daniel tries it, they can't get through with this. That means they are not in the father figure. They are not in that father office. He said, if Daniel come and try this, he will not get it through. But this one is getting it through. He's the father. He wants you to call on God and say, God, what's the meaning of this? No, 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 I don't like this. You have to withdraw this immediately. While others say, oh God, Father, we want to cancel this. You said in your word, Father, we are praying. We've been fasting. We are calling upon you. Show your mercy. He just wants you to say, Father, no, 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 no. I don't like this. Please, 
Move this this way. Hey, hey, better. That's what we're talking. Now we can gist. He wants to have fellowship with his creation. He wants to sit shoulder to shoulder to his creation. He wants to fellowship with you. Tonight's prayer, as we close on this Father's Day message, is that, Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you walk through. Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, it's a prayer. I want to be more like you. I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you walk through. Lord, I want to be more like you. He wants you to rise up and come and rub shoulders with him. Come and sit with him, rub shoulders and have a talk with him. Lord, I want to be more like you. Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to be a vessel you walk through. I want to be more. While the children are crying, Lord, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. I'm tired. Every and the young men are going, branding all the word everywhere. Lord, I worship you. Say, I just want to know Him. The emphasis of Father is knowledge, not, not your, your blessings, blessings not, not your power. Glory. No, no glory, no not glory. your grace, but no. you, Lord, I want you, and all else is nothing, as I have found in his fellowship. They know God. They discuss with him. They interact with him. They fellowship with him. You see. Lord, I worship you. Help us to be fathers. Help us to grow. Help us to know you the more. To fellowship with you. To love you, O oh God. To appreciate you. Kaluze vrede mokoto. Mandolo moko zuvro doko mo seketeya. Grandolo moko zivru duku zakataya. And all else is nothing as I have found in your as I close, one of the visions the Lord Jesus appeared to me, he said there are seven categories of men in this life. I guess I was um, in a fix and I was like, ah, should I do, should I not do, ah, time is going, let me. And he said, there are mere men. As he said it, the scripture will pop in my spirit. The natural man cannot receive the things of God for their foolishness to him. He said, there are children of God. As he said it, ah, I knew, hey, I behaved like a child. He said, they are tossed to and fro like children. I know I was being tossed to and fro. I knew this is what God wanted. But he was saying, ah, no, 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 this is this. And I was contemplating, maybe, and he just appeared. I said, there are children. I said, children, ah, I felt guilty. 
I said, I just behaved like a child. But I didn't say it out. He said, there are servants of God. He said, there are servants of God. As he said, the scripture said, the servant knows not what the master is doing. Kai. He said, there are sons of God. He said, as he said it, the scripture came, those who are sons of God, are, those who are led of the spirit are the sons of God. He said, there are gods in this earth. And this scripture came, unto whom the word of the Lord came, call them gods. He said, they are friends of God. He said to Moses, when I talk to my friend, I don't talk in parables, I talk plainly. He didn't mention number one, but I know those who have come to the stature of the fullness. He said, stop behaving like a child, behave like a son. Got up and walked out. When I woke up, my friend said, hey, have you got to say, yeah, yeah, don't go there again. This my position is fixed. And it's fixed unto death. Ah, the card that put it in more change. <laughs> you can't be to the Lord and be like before. No, ah, uh, what is, what, ah, uh, no, when it will change. Let it be that way. See, I can call it better. Otherwise, you won't come here again. And um, he wants you to be his friend. He wants you to be his friend. A father. He wants you to be, because he doesn't report to anybody. So he wants one or two people that if you're not happy with God, you go and meet. And God, they say, God, ah, you today reported you to me. <laughs> God, he said, what did they say I did? Ah, Olua, Mama Shebe. Eh, yeah. And do this matter. So, okay, bye, she, bye, she, bye, she, bye. You'll be shocked. He's looking for people who will do that to him. And I pray he will find it in you. Amen. You will grow to be fathers Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. You will grow to be mothers Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. You will grow to that stature Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the